Welcome back. We've been looking at observability, and now we're actually going to see which sensor measurements for the inverted pendulum on a cart give us an observable system. Okay, so just recall we have a cart that can move left and right. We have an inverted pendulum on that cart, and this pendulum could be in the up position, which is unstable, or it could be hanging in the down position, which is kind of like a gantry crane where it moves left and right. Uh, this system had four states. It had x, x dot, theta, and theta dot. This is kind of our big vector state x. And we derived the nonlinear systems of equations, and we also looked at the linearization in the up position and in the down position. Okay, so we got a linear system, x dot equals ax plus bu. Uh, this is for the linearized dynamics about either the pendulum up or pendulum down condition. So A would be a 4 by 4 linear matrix. In this case, uh, U, our input, is a force on the cart. Uh, and so B is a 4 by 1 column vector. And we showed that you can stabilize the inverted pendulum dynamics by developing a, a controller. But now we're going to be looking at, when we have measurements, Y equals CX, how uh, for what measurements y equals cx can I back out what the full state of the system was, okay? And so again, just to remind everybody, this has to do with the observability matrix, O, B, S, V, uh, A, comma, C is what it is in MATLAB. And if this observability matrix has full rank, then you can essentially build an estimator to estimate x just for measurements of y. And so the most popular estimator is the Kalman filter. Okay, so let's try a few different measurements C and see if, uh, if the system is or is not observable. Okay, okay so I'm going to pull up MATLAB. And notice here, just like in the last time we define our system parameters, uh, I'm going to look at the pendulum. Let's say we want to look at the pendulum up position just to start with. So I have my linearized dynamics in A, my actuator input in B. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pick a sensor. We're going to measure, let's say, one of these variables. So let's say C equals, uh, let's say I want to measure just the X position. Okay, so just the X position would be C equals 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so let's write this out. If I had, um, let's say, C equals 1, 0, 0, 0, then if I take the transpose of this x vector, I see I have x, x dot, theta, and theta dot. And so this C measurement matrix just measures x, the, the scalar position of the cart, little x of t. Okay? And what we're going to see is whether or not this measurement of just the position of the cart is enough to dynamically back out all of the other variables, x dot, theta, and theta dot. Okay? So just like with controllability, all I have to do is define the A and the C matrices, and then I can type in OBSV A comma C. So I'm going to type that in so that we see the output. And then we're going to look at the determinant of OBSV A comma C to make sure that it's full rank. Okay? So if it has a determinant, then it's going to be full rank. Now I'm just going to run this code. And we're going to see in the output, let's see if I can lift this up really quickly. Let me just type it in here, OBSV A comma C. So this is the observability matrix. Remember, the observability matrix is um, O equals C, then it should be c times a, c times a squared, and c times a cubed, at least in this case, okay? So the observability matrix, again, the first row is in fact c, this matrix here. The next row is c times a, the third row is c times a squared, and the fourth row is c times a cubed. And because this is a lower triangular matrix, we can just spot inspect that this thing has uh, full rank or it um, has a non-zero determinant. In fact, this determinant is equal to four debt obsv a comma c. 
And so what this tells us right off the bat is that this measurement, if I just measure the cart's position x, then that system, that linear system is observable, which means that I can then use that single measurement to back out all of the other um, state variables in time. And then I could use that estimated state for full state feedback control. Okay? Now let's just see if some other measurements are also um, observable or not. So let's say instead of measuring x, I want to measure theta. Okay? So if I measure theta, is the system uh, full state observable? Okay? And if this was a live class, I'd ask, how, I'd ask you all to vote. How many of you think it's observable? How many of you think it's not going to be observable? Uh, but I'll just run it and see. Okay? So notice that my determinant is equal to zero. That means it's definitely not observable. So if I measure only theta of t, I can't estimate every other state in time because my determinant of my observability matrix is zero, meaning my observability matrix, OBSV of a comma c, is not full rank. And so to look at this, we actually look at the observability matrix here, and we see exactly why it's not full rank. Okay? In particular, notice that this entire first column corresponding to the uh, x of t variable is all zeros. And this kind of makes sense. Remember when we derived the system of equations, none of the equations, none of these x dot equations uh, actually depended directly on this cart position x. Okay? So everything depended on theta, x dot, theta dot, right? Those things actually create forces. But the system doesn't care if my cart is here, or here, or here. Okay, so it's translationally invariant, meaning that the, the scalar position x of t doesn't come in anywhere in the equations. And so if I don't directly measure it, I can't actually estimate the cart's position x of t. And that's what it says here, is that basically there's this whole column vector, there's this whole state given by um, the cart's position that's not observable if I measure theta of t. Okay? So if I really want to be able to, to stabilize this inverted pendulum on a cart, and I want to be able to walk it to exactly some physical position, let's say I want to be able to move it left one meter, then I had better measure the x position because I can't infer it from any of these other measurements. Okay? Uh, so that's kind of, kind of neat. All right, so what we're going to do next time is we're going to go back and use this measurement of the cart's position x of t. We're going to use this measurement that was observable, and based on that single measurement y, we're going to build a common filter uh, to estimate all of x, uh, all of the state x at all times, and then we're going to use that estimated full state again with LQR to stabilize the system even with only one measurement. Okay, thank you.